Now what we'd like to do is review the atypical antipsychotics and the risk of using these agents during pregnancy. And here I'd like to talk to you about two substantial studies, one of which is ongoing now, and that is the National Pregnancy Registry for Atypical Antipsychotics that is run by the Massachusetts General Hospital. And this is data that actually is used and continues to be accumulated by the FDA in terms of advising patients and professional caregivers about how to use atypical antipsychotics during pregnancy. Here the conclusions regard the reproductive safety of these agents, and it looks like currently available data does not suggest a signal of teratogenicity. There is also another large prospective cohort study from which we have data, the first trimester use of atypical antipsychotics. This is a Japanese study that compared exposed versus unexposed pregnant women, and that data substantiates the data from the National Pregnancy Registry of Mass General. And currently available data from that study also does not suggest any signal of teratogenicity or any pattern of malformations in exposed women. The results suggest that the use of atypical antipsychotics in pregnant women with serious psychiatric illness may in fact be a prudent choice. I should add that when we look at placental passage of antipsychotics in pregnancy, olanzapine is found at the highest level compared to haloperidol, which is somewhat less, compared to risperidone, which is somewhat less again, compared to catiapine. So the antipsychotic that has the lowest level in maternal serum of those four is catiapine. And this is data that comes from Newport 2007, the American Journal of Psychiatry. But we still recommend using the antipsychotic that works the best for the patient. And that's because of our data that we have from the Mass General and that Japanese study I mentioned. At the same time, the FDA labeling does suggest and this includes all typical and atypical antipsychotics, that there are some EPS symptoms in neonates post-delivery. And these symptoms include agitation, increased or decreased muscle tone and tremors, sleepiness, breathing, and feeding difficulties. So the suggestion is to observe these babies in a special care nursery for about 48 hours postpartum. Key points here then are current data, which is accumulating, suggests that first trimester use of atypical antipsychotics is not associated with an increased risk of major congenital malformations. Following delivery, there is a risk of extrapyramidal side effects in the neonate. Nevertheless, for pregnant women with serious psychiatric illness, such as bipolar disorder, the use of atypical antipsychotics should strongly be considered.